and gentlemen, we are about to start our next presentation. And next up, we don't have a photographer for you. We have a filmmaker. And he's not just any filmmaker. He has won a BAFTA. He almost won an Emmy, but he was nominated. So it was very close, maybe next time. And he has his work, or one piece of his work, um, voiced over by none other than Sir David Attenborough. We're delighted to have him here with us to share his work. His work is instantly recognizable, as you'll see just in a few moments. And um, he's been working with Nikon for a very long time. And uh, when Nikon had a prototype of the Z7, they said, let's give it to Rob, let's see what he wants to do. And Rob took the Z7 and traveled all the way to Tokyo to shoot a film called Tokyo Seamless, which he'll tell you all about now. So we're delighted to have him here with us on the Nikon stage. Please give a huge round of applause to Rob Whitworth. Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, my name is Rob Whitworth. I'm a filmmaker from the UK. So um, I want to talk to you today about, well, why I get to stand here and talk to you. I mean, what made my work go from something my family tolerated to becoming a BAFTA winning filmmaker? I also want to talk about a really cool recent project, something like the Mothership Calling, getting called to Tokyo to use a prototype Z7 and play you a video I made with it and check out how the camera gets along you know, behind the scenes, how it performs. So anyway, let's go back a few years. So I just pressed the upload button on my first city video, Traffic Infrenetic Ho Chi Minh City. This was the culmination of a year living and filming in Vietnam, and it was live online. Let's take a little look at a clip. Super abrupt ending there. So that's an edit of Traffic Infrenetic Ho Chi Minh City. A huge amount of work had gone into this video and now is uploaded online and ready to be shared with the world. Well, I say the world, but actually at the time I didn't have the most impressive social media following. In fact, I didn't have any work or any clients. And within 24 hours of the video's launch, it had received a staggering but then something cool happened. So by the end of that day, it received 8,500 plays. By the end of the next day, 100,000 plays. The day after, half a million plays. A few days more, one million plays. Again, one million plays. I mean, that is a crazy big number. I guess I'd heard of this about huge online audiences, but I kind of cynically thought this was the preserve of you know, videos of pandas sneezing or cats falling into fish tanks, you know, that sort of thing. And this was my passion project. This was something I had made. And here it was, getting the attention of a global audience. I mean, I get it. Play counts are exaggerated. It's not like a million people had actually watched this, and I'll never know the real number. But what I do know is some people had watched it, and they'd liked it. Indeed, they'd liked it enough to commission me to make a video for them. It was an overnight success. One project led to another. And then this project came along. One of the greatest changes in recent times has come from a single invention made less than 140 years ago. Electric light. It has become more and more powerful, filling our streets with light. everywhere in the city. It even goes underground. <laughs> the difference between day and night is becoming less and less perceptible. Cool. Thank you. Um, so that was a clip from the incredible Planet Earth 2, the final episode, Cities, uh, estimated to have reached a global audience in excess of 600 million people. The work of the BBC Natural History Unit is the gold standard of nature filmmaking, and it's still unbelievable and something of a childhood dream fulfilled, having the voice of Sir David Attenborough narrating my work. This incredible commission started with those first million plays. So I was given the confidence to not only stick with, but develop 
my own style. So what is that? You hear that quite a lot, your own style. And it really can be daunting when you're starting out. I mean, what is it about your work that's truly unique? Daunting, yes, but I think it really is essential to work that out. It's all about specializing. You find something you love, and you keep on refining it until there's literally nobody else doing something similar. It's not about copying. You'll always be inspired and influenced by work around you. It's about finding your own aesthetic, your own look. So I make flow motion videos. The idea behind flow motion is the single take. So instead of maybe conventional filmmaking, where you've got lots of jump cuts between lots of different scenes, in flow motion, we turn the camera almost into a character that explores those scenes and roams around. Something of a roller coaster ride. It's not time linear, so maybe years will pass by in seconds, or we might have slow motion moments. It's just anything that gets the story told. It's constantly developing, but there's hopefully a visual consistency to my work that makes it identifiable. So here's another short example. Once upon a time, in Cappadocia, land of fairy chimneys, we stayed in the caves beneath the hoodoos. Deep in Gorem is clay. Here, jinns, fairies, legends live. Grand Vizier Ibram Pasha built from Cappadocian clay his new city, Nevsehir. that was a clip from Once Upon a Time in Cappadocia. Uh, Cappadocia is just this phenomenal landscape, and I urge everyone to go and explore it. One of the things Cappadocia is famous for is these incredible underground labyrinths. Here's a clip from Kaimatli Caves. They're amazing underground cities that are prehistoric, and you can explore and adventure around, and they're just so much fun to do, but rather difficult to film. It's underground, and there's not any light. So, um, I was filming this project at the time the D500 had been announced. I don't know if anyone remembers that camera. It was something of a groundbreaking camera for its low-light performance, an incredible nine frames per second, continuous filming. So a lot of my work is stills. It's not video, so I'm just gunning the camera. So this camera was perfect for this shoot. The only problem was I didn't have one. My uh, family came to the rescue here. My mother-in-law actually ended up waiting at my house and getting the camera delivered, then driving to the airport and flying out to Turkey arriving on location just in time. I was filming these three old guys by the campfire, and the light was fading fast. So I had this camera handed to me, and I had literally two minutes to get this thing up and running and dialed in. Something that's great about Nikon's old and new, and the Z7 very much included, is the intuitive menu and layout. I mean, you know, you understand it, it becomes second nature, and you can do that. You can just get the camera doing what you want in no time. Here's what I was filming here. Once upon a time, all this took place in Cappadocia. Such an amazing landscape, and something that was super cool about this project was getting to do the shoot it in two seasons, being able to create the uh, sequences of seasons morphing between. So uh, how do you do that? I'd really like to say it's a matter of setting up a camera in winter and then diligently changing batteries and cleaning the lens until spring and then walking away with beautiful footage. But um, no, it's, it's all about post-production, and I love post-production. It's where my work really comes alive. I see it's a core part of the creative process. So you shoot a plate like this in winter. Uh, this is shot with a D7200, freezing conditions. Then you go back when it's slightly nicer. We went back in May you shoot an identical shot. So this is from a hotel balcony. So you just replicate every setting and line up the shots. And then you've got your before and after plates. And it's a matter of amalgamating the two. And you create the transition to make it satisfying. So like you might have seen a lot of duration time lapses before, where the light's doing all sorts of stuff. The shadows are moving everywhere. It's not satisfying. So I like to create that aesthetic and create it in post. Pretty abrupt change of landscape, this one. So we're looking at Tokyo at sunrise, and this was filmed with a prototype Z7. Like, absolutely phenomenal project to be involved in, something of the mothership calling, getting invited to use a top-secret camera in Tokyo and make a video. 
The video is called Tokyo Seamless. It's shot entirely on the Nikon Z7. I'd like to play you the video now and then take a look behind the scenes to see how the camera performs on a real world shoot. Thank you. Um, so we just watched Tokyo Seamless. That was shot entirely on the Nikon Z7. And uh, I want to take a look behind the scenes now and you know, show you how I do a couple of the transitions in there and you know, review the camera a little bit. So the scene I have in mind involves this guy, a bunny. I don't know if anyone's been to Tokyo in summer, but it's really, really hot. And this poor guy had to wear a bunny costume. Uh, so I have to feel for him here. It also involves our lead talent. We'll call her Alice. So on a normal shoot, I'd be down here on the ground with these guys, but Tokyo Seamless was all about capturing Alice as a tiny detail, meandering through really big landscapes. So this actual scene, where we zoom right into the bunny, is created using four cameras filming simultaneously. All Z7s here with varying lenses. A little side note, um, this is a prototype camera, top secret, uh, and we're shooting in Tokyo, where everyone loves cameras, and uh, the little camera hats we have here uh, were knitted by my grandma, and they really came in handy hiding the camera. So I um, have to say thank you, grandma, at this point. Moving swiftly on. Um, so what were these four cameras doing? So they amalgamate together to make one shot with sort of infinite zoom possibilities. Here's our wide shot, 14 mil, shot with a 1424 lens, FTZ adapter. Two details here, left and right, amalgamate together to make one shot here that we can zoom into, 70 mil. And then way in the distance, we have a 500 mil shot Caption the moment Alice and Bunny meet. So image quality is a really big deal for my work. It makes sequences like this possible, and the Z7 obviously is, you know, it is unsurpassed as a Nikon camera for resolving detail and delivering 8K straight from RAW. It really is cool, and it opens up creative possibilities. So I love resolution. Let's look at video. So here we are, filming the final uh, location on the ground, shooting the moment Alice and Bunny meet. I'm filming with a tripod. Over here, 105 mm lens, f1.4, using the FTZ adapter. Shooting video, shooting autofocus, shallow depth of field for multiple takes. Now, this is really exciting as a filmmaker, having super reliable focus in video. The video not only looks great, but is reliable, and you get beautiful shots like this, not only with the Z mount lenses, but with all your existing F mount lenses using the FTZ adapter. This is a really cool new feature, and I'm very excited about this one. So that was a pretty complicated scene, right? We were filming multiple talent in multiple locations uh, at Tokyo Station. I'm reliably informed it's the first time there has been a photo shoot there, let alone one with a bunny in it. And um, all of this takes a lot of planning. Planning is crucial. It's, to my, in my opinion, it's more important maybe than the shoot itself. It's where you iron out all the details, you agree a concept with the client, and then if everything's been planned well, it's just a matter of executing it on the day, just getting the shots and almost running through the motions. All that being said, there's something you can't plan for. And uh, well, it's the weather. No matter where you shoot in the world, 
it's always a factor. You spend loads of time looking at forecasts, looking up at the sky. This whole shoot had been a reshoot. We were here three days previously. It was gray, overcast, looked flat. The bunny waited patiently, but nothing. No gaps in the cloud. There's no way of faking good light, uh, unfortunately. I mean, maybe in the future, in a Nikon camera, there'll be the ability to add shadows in. That'll be really handy. I've said it a lot this week, so I'm really hoping they're listening and we'll get that. But for now, no. Shoot's all about looking at the sky, waiting for that perfect moment of light. So the final location of the video, this was very much the case. So we're looking at Mount Fuji, one of the most beautiful and beguiling places I've been to. Unfortunately, not the best place to film in summer. As we see here, it's often left covered in clouds, and you can get mist in addition. So it's really a lottery with the weather. We had quite a lot of people on this production, uh, and with this many people, there was no time for reshoots. I mean, we had to get this shot in one sunrise or one sunset, and then everyone had to get on the bus and go back to Tokyo. So we just had the hope the weather delivered. So this is, without doubt, the most exciting bit of video footage you'll see today. This is me walking to the location. Hopefully, what this demonstrates is the lighter form factor of the Z7. I mean, I'm carrying four camera bodies here, multiple lenses, tripods, grip, everything I need for the shoot. And when you're walking a distance from wherever you're traveling to the location, you notice it, and it really makes a difference. Unless you like heavy bags, mirrorless systems are great for this, and uh, yeah, you appreciate them at moments such as this. What you don't appreciate is when it's raining, when you rock up at the location. Uh, it's looking a little bit better. You know, we can see more of the mountain, but you know, it's not picture postcard, is it? Over here, where the sun is setting, over to our right, it could get good. You know, this is the gap in the clouds. The sun could go into this, and it's one of those situations where you could have the most magical sunset, or you could be crying yourself to sleep, and you don't really know which. So get set up, get shooting, get a shot. Here I am, I'm filming with two Z7s, both using the 2470 f4 lens. Uh, we have our master shot, as we zoom in here, which is wide at 24. We then have a detail at 70 mil, capturing the moment the couple embrace. OK, so we've got a shot. It's all right. We want better. But you know, we've got something in the bag. Do a couple of rehearsals. But then the most crucial ingredient on any shoot, waiting. <laughs> it always seems to be the case. Um, it gets interesting. Look, I mean, there's some color appearing in the sky, which is great. But not only that, the wind drops as well, which means we get super still bits of water, which are perfect for shooting reflections. Now, this is not my most impressive camera setup here. But it is about being able to trust your kit and rely on it. I mean, the camera's practically in the water here, but there was no time we had to get this shot. So this is my main shot, 14 mil, shot with the FTZ adapter. I'm hand-holding the second one, you know, literally hand-holding 105 mil shot for the detail. This is the last light of the day. You know, we have to get this shot. There's no rehearsals, and uh, we do, and it's beautiful. And after two weeks of hectic filming in a big city of Tokyo, being here, standing here in this epic scene with such calm was really magical, something unforgettable, and something that you know, really makes me feel very privileged to do the work I do. So to belatedly answer the question of why I get to stand here today and talk to you, the answer is obviously thanks to Nikon. All of the work we've seen here today was filmed with Nikon cameras. That first video, that Ho Chi Minh City video, was filmed uh, with a D7000 and D300. Over the years, my kit's constantly been changing. I mean, the D800 was amazing when it came out for super high resolution. But not only that, the dynamic range, which is everything for time lapses. Like a nightfall sequence here, where you're doing the holy grail, having that flexibility in the RAW file to smooth out that sequence really is everything and really makes a difference. The Z7 marks a really exciting chapter. I mean, it way surpasses the D800. Just the sheer quality is unsurpassed in Nikon cameras, in my opinion. And also the ability to resolve detail and shoot 8K, you know, that really is a useful thing. The reduced size, unless you like heavy bags, you will notice it, and it's a good thing. And the mirrorless systems are very beneficial. The video, as we've seen, is now, that's a real big addition to the Nikon arsenal, being able to use all of your existing glass and new glass and shoot reliable, good, you know, the video looks great, but with reliable face detection focusing, that's a great thing. The most exciting thing for me is where this goes. I mean, I got to go to Tokyo and meet some of the engineers, and I got a real air of excitement from these few geniuses that make this thing. You know, they're excited about this lens mount and making previously impossible focal lengths and apertures possible. And, you know, I just can't wait to see where this goes. It's very exciting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much to the fantastic Rob Whitworth. Rob's going to be hanging out. 
at the side of the stage for about five minutes. So if you, ladies and gentlemen, want to use this opportunity to ask the one and only Rob Whitworth any question that you might have for him, he's ready. He looks ready. He is ready. So five minutes with Rob Whitworth. Time starts now. We'll take a very short break on the stage. We're going to be back.